I'd been building little toy languages that all felt you know, kind of like the bastard child of Perl and Python and C++ or something like that because they were what I knew mm -hmm. um, for like 15 years or something like that, well before I really discovered functional programming per se. Um, I mean, for like when I was writing Perl, I understood like you have maps, and so you apply mapping, you map over a list, and you can apply some action for everything in there. So like there was some like s imperative functional mixed metaphor kind of uh, code going on in, in what I was writing, but it wasn't really seeped into my bones. And um, later on I had uh, written a JavaScript compiler in JavaScript that compiles JavaScript to JavaScript. And it used a technique that comes out of the functional programming community called uh, continuation passing style. Uh, so it let me like, cap like if, you, if you've run a uh, web page um, and it's got a bunch of code on it. Maybe sometimes you've, 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 you've sat there and the browser has done this like, hey, this page is taking too long. Do you want to stop the code running? You, mm -hmm. I used to, used to see this message a lot. You don't see it so much anymore. Um, and to avoid that, if you wanted to do a lot of work on the page, being able to like, take a snapshot of where you are in the middle of a, of a long running computation and capture it and then like, set a little timer and then come back after the user interface has had some time to do its thing. Um, let you sidestep that kind of messaging. So I, I was doing a bunch of stuff with that. Yeah. And um, then Google released this thing called the Google Web Toolkit, which was the idea that you could compile Java to JavaScript. And so they got types and an IDE support, and all, like, they got all sorts of goodies that I wasn't getting out of this. So the, the idealized form of what they'd built was better than the idealized form of the thing I was building, so I like, abandoned it and sold it to a company that was doing some debugging stuff. And, um, but I really knew JavaScript very well at that point. And they were trying to do a new JavaScript standard. Um, and the only language I could think of that had all the features that we were trying to put into this version of ECMAScript, this is before Har Harmony, um, was Perl 6. And I knew Perl really well. I ran a whole phone company on it for a long time. And so I said, okay, well, well, the working implementation of Perl 6 is in this language, Haskell, whatever the heck that is. I'll just learn Haskell and write this JavaScript implementation for this new language standard that was going to be a new thing um, and run it server side. It's like maybe somebody wants to run JavaScript on their server. This was before Node by a considerable margin. And I would go from there. Um, and then I got involved in the Haskell community. I just sat in the Haskell IRC channel and asked some questions. And there was a guy answering questions using a math I didn't know to solve computer science problems I didn't know. And I'd just done a master's in each of these things. And it like almost infuriated me. Like I did that to put it to bed so I wouldn't be in this situation. I, I wanted to have the breadth so that, I'm like, okay, that's a thing. Now I can go put a suit on and make a bunch of money and go buy an, buy an island somewhere. And all of a sudden, I got a good glimpse of how little I actually knew. Um, and I just assumed that everyone in the Haskell community was like this guy who, like Kale Gibbard, by the way, um, for the Haskellers in the audience, um, that you know, knew all this math and all this category theory and all this computer science-y stuff. Um, because he was sitting on an IRC channel fielding questions from like five people at a time using math I didn't know to solve computer science problems I didn't know. And it was just mind boggling to me. Um, so I learned category theory and I learned type theory by just like throwing myself at every paper I could get my hands on for like the next six months. And I didn't like stop until I emerged a Haskeller. Um, and it was really like the idea that um, I'd been building all these toy languages and Haskell had better versions of my ideas, which was not a thing I was expecting. Like to, to come in and have like this thing that I've been chewing on, like chewing on in the back of my brain for 15 years or something like that at that point and have Haskell just have, Haskell just have better solutions. So I had to decide, do I like stick my head back in the sand and pretend I didn't see any of this stuff, or do I make their solutions my own? And it took me a good chunk of time, but I eventually made their solutions my own and tried to do everything I could to try and advance the role of Haskell in the world.